Morning guys, Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School, back with another video in our Bulletproof Bushcraft on a Budget series. I think today what we're going to cover is cover. And I want to go through it kind of extensively with you, and we're going to talk about things that are maybe things that people wouldn't consider necessarily common man, but I, you have to understand that when I say common man on a budget, that means that sometimes you've got to save up for things that cost a little bit more money if they are bulletproof. So not everything that you can do on a budget and do effectively is really what I would consider cheap. Some things are more expensive, but I'm going to show you some options that are fairly inexpensive. Then I'm going to show you some upgrades that may be a little more expensive. But understand that you know, if you're going to invest money in something, number one, your cutting tool should be it. That should be where your biggest investment in terms of monetary value goes. And beyond that, sleep is one of the most important things that you can get in any emergency situation or even just out camping and tramping and hiking around if you look through history those guys didn't mess around with sleeping sleeping and eating were the two things those guys specialized in and a good night's sleep can do a lot for you we're going to talk about ways to effectively get a good night's sleep some of them on a very inexpensive budget some of them on a little bit higher budget we're going to talk about all those things today so stay with me guys okay guys i've got three examples of tarps here now the one example i don't have laying here is a Silni tarp. Silni tarps are definitely lightweight, but most of the time, unless you make it yourself and buy the material, they're fairly expensive. When I say fairly expensive, I mean they're going to be in the $65 to $100 range most of the time, sometimes even more. You can check our website. We've got a couple tarps within that $65 to $100 price range made out of Silni, the Pathfinder Trail tarp, and the Adventure 2 tarp or both in that price range I believe. If you really want to go budget budget you can just get a regular polypropylene tarp. This one happens to be camouflage. It's four mil. It's six by eight. You want to stay away from three mil. Three mil is a little bit too thin for a good bulletproof shelter unless it's something very very temporary and if you're going to go three mil in that case you might as well just buy a painter's drop cloth because you're going to get a lot more for your money out of that than you would a tarp. But Four mil is a pretty good thickness that will last you pretty much at least a season. If you had to leave it up, it's going to get ripped up and tore up in the wind, but it'll last a pretty good season if it has to. This one's six by eight. This one's about four to five bucks, depending on where you buy it. This one came from Menards, I think, and it was about four ninety nine somewhere in that neighborhood for a six by eight. They go up in price from there, but you can buy these all the way up to like twelve by sixteen, eighteen by twenty. Uh, but then you're up in the price range, but you're also up in the amount of cover that you have. So it depends on whether you're trying to go lightweight or not. A 6x8 is big enough to cover one person easy enough. And for an emergency shelter, you know, this thing's going to fold up very, very small to put in your pack and doesn't weigh anything. So if you're looking for small amounts of weight or you're worried about the weight you carry or you have a handicap or a condition that prevents you from carrying a lot of weight, this is a decent way to carry a budget cover type element or microclimate that doesn't cost a lot of money. The other way to carry something light would be go to Silni, which again is going to cost you a little bit more money. The other two tarps I have sitting here are both canvas tarps. And I use canvas tarps as an example because there are lots of canvas tarps on the market. And in some ways you get what you pay for. In some ways you're just trying to get by. This tarp, this green tarp, again it came from Menards. It's a canvas tarp. It has grommets in about eight or ten places on the tarp. It has sewn-in triangles to reinforce where the grommet holes are at. It's not real thick, heavy canvas. It's pretty thin canvas, probably 9 ounce. And it is pretty lightweight. A tarp like this, and this one here, I believe, again, is a 6x8 tarp. This one is about $35. But for $35, bucks, you are getting something that's going to last a lot longer than a season. Now... How waterproof is this thing? Probably not very because it's going to be untreated canvas. It's going to be waterproof to the point where the fabric swells up and holds a little bit of water, but it's not going to be waterproof. It's going to be water resistant. It's probably not treated with any kind of flame retardant, so it's going to be susceptible to flame. The bad thing about tarps like the polypropylene and the Silni is they are very, very susceptible to flame. If a spark hits it, it's going to be a hole. Get out the duct tape something like this you got a little bit more time to get rid of that spark before it's going to burn a big hole in it but something that's not treated it's not a fire retardant canvas is still going to burn eventually but again sometimes you get what you pay for 35 bucks you're getting a decent tarp with a decent weight 
ratio between too heavy and too light and you're getting it for a good price so there are disadvantages you have to understand to that this tarp is Derek Ferrius Woodland Woodsman Trail tarp this one is eight foot by eight foot it has tie outs instead of grommets and again normally if you're going to get tie outs on a tarp you're going to pay more money for the tie outs than you're going to for grommets so you have to think about that this one is probably 12 ounce canvas you can tell that it's treated it's very waxy feeling so it's going to be water retardant it's probably going to be or water resistant probably going to be flame retardant i actually have tarps made out of this material that i've had water sitting on them for long periods of time that did not leak water even in a puddle of water so they're very very water resistant they're going to be more flame resistant obviously than this because they're probably treated with a flame retardant as well and the difference in weight between something like this and something like this is probably almost double even though this is a six by eight this is an eight by eight this is a bigger tarp but it weighs double what this one weighs so if you're worried about weight this is going to be a concern but if you want bulletproof this is it this is bulletproof but again price point wise budget wise you're talking about something that costs a hundred dollars versus something that costs 35 dollars so again you kind of get what you pay for now you can get heavy canvas tarps like this with grommet holes on them with grommet holes in them like this off the internet for the $50 range somewhere in that neighborhood $50 $60 so you can get this tarp cheaper if you're willing to forego the tie outs the tie outs make this thing more bulletproof because you don't have any grommet holes they're going to tear out over time or in wind or by being stretched whereas these you have a possibility of the grommets tearing out on this one you probably don't because it's got tie outs sewn into it all right it's got heavy duty nylon tie outs on it so I wanted to go over those cover elements with you to make you understand a little bit or help you understand the things that I've learned over time that, you know, something like this will last you for a season. It's great for an emergency. It's great if you're on a budget, but it's not a very bulletproof solution. Something like this is more bulletproof. Solni is more bulletproof, but both of these are going to be susceptible a little bit to flame. The Silni, very susceptible to flame. This one is going to be heavier than Silni, but it's going to be a heavy duty fabric and more heavy and resistant to winds and things like that and probably keep the warmth in better if you have a reflector fire going obviously than something that's made out of nylon something like this is going to be probably your most bomb proof solution other than a canvas tent would be a heavy duty canvas tarp that's made out of like a 12 ounce treated canvas that's waxy feeling so you know it's going to be water resistant you know it's going to be flame resistant you know it's going to last a long time doesn't have any grommets in it so do I buy three of these over the next three years at 35 bucks a piece, or do I buy one of these that lasts me for 10 years? That's the difference between common man and common sense. Common sense tells me spend the money now and have it for a long period of time and have something I know is going to be good. Now, if I can't carry this much weight, then I've got to change my options a little bit. But that depends on you and what you're looking to carry. So now we've talked about a microclimate. Let's talk about blankets for a minute versus sleeping bags. Okay guys, so let's talk about wool blankets versus sleeping bags for a minute, okay? Don't kid yourself and believe, no matter what you've heard or what anybody tells you or what you've heard me say in past videos or talk about, that when it gets below freezing, you're going to be very comfortable in just a wool blanket because you're not, okay? You can get good, high-quality wool blankets that are very thick and very big that you can wrap up in and you can be pretty comfortable below freezing. But once it gets down below 20 degrees, you're going to have problems getting real comfortable in just a wool blanket unless you spend the money. And I mean spend the money on a good one. So for this series, let's just talk a little bit about that. And let's talk about wool blankets first versus sleeping bags. What's the advantage of a wool blanket versus a sleeping bag? Well, if it's not 100% wool, there's not a whole lot of advantages. Because it has to be able to be fire retardant. It has to be water resistant. It has to hold its insulative value when it's wet, and that only can be accomplished by 100% wool. If it's not 100% wool, you're not going to get that. So things like this casualty blanket that are 70-30, while this thing's going to be really nice and warm, especially when it's, you know, 40 degrees or whatever the case may be, 45, 50 degrees, this thing's going to be plenty toasty, and it was 15 bucks. Once it gets cold, not so much. If it gets wet, not so much. It's not going to be water resistant, it's going to absorb water because cotton absorbs water, whereas wool doesn't. Wool repels water. 
So you've got to think about those things as well. So if I'm going to carry a blanket and I want to get something on a budget and I can find a 70-30 like this casualty blanket, it's going to keep me warm in fair weather, but it's not going to keep me warm in drastically cold weather. The other side of that coin is you're probably not going to find a blanket like this, not even an army blanket, that is the size of a handmade wool blanket or like a six-point uh, Hudson Bay blanket that's a queen size or a king size blanket and that's a big key element with wool blankets to keep warm in colder weather is they have to be large enough that you can roll up in them and overlap the fabrics and create dead airspace. and we've talked about that in other videos on how to use a wool blanket properly I have a video where I taught the West Virginia EMS uh, wilderness survival for an overnight rescue and we talked about wool blankets, so we showed how to wrap up in a wool blanket. And the big advantage to a large wool blanket is you can do that. So if you've got a blanket like this, I would suggest buying two. But just hope that it's not going to get too damp, because it'll keep you warm if you roll up into it and overlap the material, but it's not going to keep you dry. And that's, that's important to understand. It's not going to keep you warm when it's wet. I shouldn't say it's not going to keep you dry. It won't keep you warm when it's wet at all. This is a military wool blanket. Okay, and the military wool blankets are very, very thin. Even if they're 100% wool, which this one is, they're very, very thin. So again, take two. These are twin size blankets. They're not queens, they're not kings, they're twins. Get two of these things and sew them together if that's what you have to do so that you can wrap up in layers of wool and you'll be better off. Another big advantage to a blanket is I can throw this thing over me for another piece of outerwear. I can sit in front of the fire with this thing around me. It's fire retardant because it's made out of wool. This one being 100% is going to be very fire retardant. So if a spark hits it or something like that, it's not just going to burn a hole straight through it. I'm not going to wrap up my sleeping bag in front of my campfire. So this is a big advantage over wool. You could also use this for a shelter if you had to. Being that it's water resistant, it will pre create a semi-microclimate for you to keep you warm or to keep weather off of you to some extent by using a wool blanket as a tarp. So there are big advantages over, uh, over a sleeping bag with a wool blanket as long as you understand the limitations of the wool blanket you have. Now a wool blanket like this, this is a handmade, hand loomed out of virgin wool blanket. This is not factory loomed, this is a hand loomed wool blanket. And you can see the difference between the size of this blanket rolled up and the size of this blanket rolled up is a huge, huge difference, okay? This is a queen size hand woven wool blanket. This is an heirloom type thing. You're gonna pass this down to your grandkids. But the price of this is way up there. 10 times or more the price of a blanket like this. $15, $350. This blanket will keep you warm below freezing if you wrap up in it, like I've shown in other videos and overlap the layers, this blanket's never going to keep you warm when it gets below freezing. So again, you have to understand limitations and you have to take advantage of them or you have to spend the money. Now, this thing is way beyond common man as far as that goes. But again, sometimes you get what you pay for. You can find Hudson Bay blankets if you find a good six point on eBay. Sometimes you can find them in the $150 to $200 range. Worth every penny of it if you can find one that big for sure. I would never say don't buy that. Even if you're on a budget, save the money up for a good wool blanket if that's the route you want to go. Okay, so that covers wool blankets, advantages, disadvantages. The only disadvantages to a wool blanket over a sleeping bag is the size, the bulk, the weight's not much different if you get a good sleeping bag like an MMS sleep system we'll talk about in a minute. The weight's not much different. This blanket right here doesn't weigh any more than an MMS sleep system does for sure. The bulk is about the same as an MMS sleep system, and it has advantages, but it also has disadvantages where it's not going to keep you as warm as that MMS sleep system. Don't ever let anyone fool you. An MMS sleep system will keep you warm just about no matter what. Okay? So, let's talk about sleeping bags. This is my MMS sleep system. You can see how big it is and how bulky it is in its smallest element. Now, I do not use the green bag. The MMS sleep system, or the modular sleep system for the military, uses three different components. It has a bivy bag, which is a waterproof Gore-Tex bag. That's called the bivy. And it looks like this. It's camouflage. It's 100% waterproof. You can lay in a puddle with this thing and you're not going to get wet. I've done it. There's no question about it. And then it comes with two other bags, one of which I don't even have in this bag. 
a black bag which is called the Arctic bag and this is how I use the system. I just use the black bag and the bivy and I've slept on top of nine inches of snow in minus 13 degree weather with just these two items wearing minus 33 degree wool underwear and nothing else and been plenty warm. I woke up the next morning with a big ring around my bed from where the snow had melted around me because I was putting off so much heat. Sleeping bags have advantages of having lofting in them that keeps them warm. That will trap dead air space and that's important. That's where your warmth comes from is trapping that warm air that your body's given off inside of something. The disadvantage to this, the big disadvantage is, number one, you're not going to use something like this around a campfire because it will burn. Gore-Tex, will, you'll burn a hole right in this, you'll burn a hole right in this. Number two is that when you sweat inside of this thing, unless you dry this out every single day, the insulation is going to get wet inside here and eventually it's going to freeze. So you have to think about those things. Do I have the ability to dry that back out if it gets wet from perspiration? The Gore-Tex is a little bit breathable, but it's still going to hold moisture in here. So you're still going to have to dry this thing out on a daily basis, especially in colder weather, so that it doesn't freeze up on you. But the advantage of something like this is packability. And obviously, like I said, it's not that much smaller than a wool blanket, even without the green bag. The weight is about the same, but I do have the ability with this to just lay on the ground, even in a driving rain, cover myself up with this bivy sack, and I'm not going to get wet. There's no question about that, and I'm going to be warm. There's no question about that. So, again, there's advantages and disadvantages to any system that you want to use, but if someone was going to ask me what system should I buy or where should I spend my money to get a bomb-proof sleep system that I'm going to get a good night's sleep with, I would tell you to buy an MMS sleep system and not a wool blanket. Even though I love using wool blankets, you know, if you're asking me if I'm buying one thing and I can only afford to buy one thing, what am I going to buy? It's going to be this. Now, let's talk about the price. These things used to be very expensive. They were $250 plus, even on eBay for a long time. I've seen these lately at gun shows. The entire system, the three bags, and not this waterproof bag, but a compression bag that it goes in. This one happens to be waterproof um, for $75. So if I spend $75 on that system and then I spend another 25 bucks on a good waterproof bag, a 30 liter bag like this, I've got 100 bucks in a sleep system that I know is bulletproof, bombproof beyond a shadow of a doubt, as long as I don't want to use that thing as a shelter system to sit under, like I could use a, a wool blanket for a tarp. I can't do that with this, but this is going to keep me dry no matter what. It's going to keep me warm no matter what. That's a big advantage to the MMS sleep system. Okay, so what else can you do if you can't afford the 75 bucks? Well, you can combine a wool blanket with a sleeping bag if you can find one cheap. This sleeping bag here um, is a very good pick and find, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. Um, this came from an Army Surplus store for $20. And this is an EcoTat sleeping bag, and they're very expensive to buy. They're made for recon marines, and they have... The bottom of them opens up so that you can sleep in it with your boots on if you need to. It zips completely open into almost like a blanket and it has a split in it right here so that you can actually use this thing if you wanted to as a poncho liner. It's a 40 degree bag. That means it's going to be comfortable down to 40 degrees. If you put this inside of a bivy, you're going to get a little bit more out of it. If you put nice warm clothes in inside of it, you're going to get a little bit more out of it. But it's a really nice brown bag. It's got a mummy hood on it. It's made by EcoTat. And it was made for the military. But I got this one for 20 bucks. So you can find good deals on sleeping bags if you look hard enough. Does that mean you're going to find one every day for 20 bucks like this? Absolutely it does not. This could be a once in a lifetime find. But there's sleeping bags out there you can find at reasonable prices. And if you combine this with a small wool blanket of some kind, like a military wool blanket, then you can take advantage of both systems or both options because you can use that blanket and you can use this. The bulk of this is not near what a sleep system is. The weight is not near what a sleep system is. So if you can stuff this into some kind of compression bag, like I've got this one in a 15 liter compression bag, or dry bag I should say, and then you can stuff a wool blanket at the same time or carry a wool blanket, then you can take advantage of the best of both worlds and you can keep pretty warm even in below freezing weather with both systems. But again, you've got to remember that this thing is going to hold moisture and it's got to be dried out 
in cold weather so that the insulation doesn't freeze up on you. That's an important thing to remember with sleeping bags. And a big disadvantage over things like wool blankets is that they don't breathe very well most of the time. So they're going to eventually freeze up if you're not careful with them. All right? But you can see this thing folds up a lot smaller than the MMS does. If I really want to compress the thing down, it'll get really, really small. And down to freezing, I'd be pretty happy with just this and maybe a wool blanket shard, like a lightweight military wool blanket that was at least, you know, 70, 30, if not 100% wool and some good undergarments. You know, I'd be happy with this. And this was 20 bucks. So you can get budget items that are bulletproof for bushcrafting or for camping or tramping or whatever you want to call it. You just got to keep your eyes open. But if I had to answer the question that I get a lot on, you know, PMs and emails of what should I buy to keep myself warm when I'm out, you know, camping in the woods or whatever the case may be, I would tell you that unless you can afford a good wool blanket, and I mean a good expensive wool blanket like a Hudson Bay or something that's handmade, get an MMS sleep system and be done with it. Okay, guys, well, I'm Dave Camber at the Pathfinder School, and I hope that this answered some of the questions that I've had about different types of cover elements from wool blankets to sleeping bags. I also hope that it answered your questions about what should I buy or what should I use or what should I get if I only have so much money. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my sponsors and my affiliates and all my friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.